at what point did you decide to step away from NASCAR? When Chip Ganassi fired me. Well, that would I would do love it. to still be there. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss it. it every day. Yeah. Okay. But what happened is my son Shane got hurt real bad at Terre Haute, and uh, he had a basically a to get all he could get. He has he only has one hand that works, but to even get to that was three years in a place called the Shepherd Center in Atlanta. The first year when I was still working for Chip, you know, we won won two of the biggest races and four races races all together in 2010. We're rolling. I mean, Chip is loving it. We're building our own cars. This is fantastic. So the next year we get engines from RCR, which was a little bit problematic, but it was okay, and we were horrible. Well, the biggest reason we were horrible, I don't want to paint myself as being the linchpin of the whole place, but I felt like I let the company down because when my kid was injured like that and he was going through this therapy and I needed to be in Atlanta a day a week or so with my wife and him, there's no way I had the right amount of focus. But at the time, I didn't realize it. We just ran horribly. I think we were 21st and 24th in points. Broke a lot of, didn't explode engines, but broke a water pump and broke a fitting. But, but I, uh, other than that, we, we also didn't run good until they did break. So it was my fault. I'm, I'm the guy that's in charge. You know, I'm a guy that they were happy about when we won four races the year before, including Daytona in the Brickyard. And Juan won a race, which was fantastic because yeah. he had threatened so many times at the Brickyard and New Hampshire. And, you know, so, it was, you know, it was a great year. 2011 was a nightmare. And that's because I wasn't aware. I wasn't doing a good job of fixing things because my mind was in Atlanta. You know, I, I messed that up. I deserved to get fired. I really did. I did a really, really poor job. And I, I knew I was 58 years old and probably couldn't get a job. And I wasn't a degreed engineer, but maybe I'd get something going on. And I went to Daytona in 12 and talked to some people, but nobody had any interest and nobody's ever called since. <laughs> Steve, you've mentioned Shane. Yes, sir. And you experienced so many things in racing. Yeah. But you went through things with Shane that, yes, sir. that no person should ever have to deal with. What did you learn from that experience, and what are you still learning? You, you go through exactly what they say you're going to go through. You, you know, I can remember tearing pictures off the wall. I was so mad at the world and God and anybody who had any involvement in this. And then, but I went for a. You know, I, I remember Lauren talking to Lauren Rainier. Yeah, he, Shane was hurt in October of of ten, and I remember being. Lauren Rainier's office, and he said, man, how's Shane doing? This is like the next, following January. I said, well, he's good. They're going to teach him. He's going to get better. He's got his, he had his thumb moving at that time. That yeah. was it. And he could stand up without passing out, which is a really big thing. And I said, yeah. He said, well, what do you look for? I said, oh, man, I just hope they get him where he's standing up and moving around a little bit by the Hoosier 100 because I really he had won the year before. I really want to take him back there and him be proud of himself. That's insane. He's got a C4 to C7. I mean, he's yeah. lucky to have a hand. He's lucky. The, when he first came to CMC in Charlotte, they, he was on a ventilator. They said, just take him home. He'll never even breathe on his own. Just take him home. He, wow. I said, no, no, let's, you know, Felix had some influence at that hospital and got him right in. I said, no, 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 let's do this. And at that time, his brain injury was so bad, he would howl like a coyote when the sun went down. I mean, that's how bad his brain was. And, and, and I'm like, you know, two months later, well, we'll just, you know, we'll go to the Hoosier 100 and see what's up. And I, I told the doctor the morning after, he said, you know, we've got to put 18-inch rods in his neck because his back is broken so badly. His spinal cord's hurt real bad. Okay. I said, now, they were, IndyCar was talking to him about running these Indy Lights cars. I said, so make sure it doesn't prevent him from being in a semi-laid-down position. And the doctor looked at me like I was nuts. And I didn't have, I didn't have a clue. I was in such denial that it was unreasonable. So, you know, in, in the, unfortunately, other p children have been hurt, and kids have been hurt, and men have been hurt, and anybody I know, I say, hey, look, man, you're going to go through a lot of things. One is, you're not going to believe them. Then you're going to be mad at them. Then you're going to be mad at yourself. And then you're going to be mad at God. And then eventually you just kind of work your way through it, I guess. You know, I t Kyle Petty talked to me, and he said, man, I cry every day for Adam. He said, it's not going to get better till you're dead. I said, yeah, yeah, I know, man. I, I know that, but that ain't going to happen to me. You yeah, know, I yeah, mean, yeah. Not, not, I'm, I'm one tough son of a gun, and, and I still struggle with it every day. That's I the bet. biggest thing I learned is you don't get over it. 